Who are you this time? Go play with your toy. Go. <laughs> and she's back. <laughs> hey guys, we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Please subscribe. What's up, Mabu High Squad? How you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, welcome to another vlog. Yay! I always miss you guys in between uploading dates. For those of you who are new, welcome to the channel. My name is Mikey Bustos and this here is the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse. A house that my partner and RJ and I have been working on for the past five years. It's finally done. Um, and we're just adding a few touches now. Welcome to another vlog. One of the new additions is this. Ooh, new lounge chairs for this pool deck area here. Isn't it pretty? See? Beautiful, right? And guess what? It's from Kenneth Kobonpoe, one of the most famous furniture designers in the whole world. Local Filipino uh, designer. We have a lot of his stuff. And this is just so beautiful. It completely matches our motif. Like, see? Matches the plants, all of that. I really love that little tray for like coffee, tea, little snacks, cupcakes, donuts, fruit. Good touch. Of course, RJ Garcia, my partner, chose this. He's got impeccable taste for design. So one of the way to distinguish Filipino furniture designers is weaving. When we first embarked on building this home, right, RJ and I began to study. We studied design, furnitures, because we wanted to identify what look we wanted for the home. And we found that a lot of Filipino furniture designers incorporate this, like very intricate weaving techniques using, um, well, this here is not natural material, I don't think, but usually they would like bamboo, rattan, different like woods and stuff. But if you see furniture that's intricately weaved like this and this and that, see that, even that, Loxine Living, see how it's weaved? That coffee table, even the chandelier in the pool bar. I find that is very signature Filipino furniture design. Hi, Melody. This here's Melody, our farm cat, whom we adopted to be our own. Hi, Melody. We're gonna have to spay her soon, but I don't know if it's we're allowed because she just gave birth. But I'm afraid she's gonna get pregnant again. Like her belly's starting to look big again. For those of you who are new, she gave birth like, what was it, a month and a half ago? And then we, uh, on the second or third day, the babies were killed. Three were missing and three were dead with their necks chewed, killed by through the neck. Um, and we don't know what did it. We're not sure if it's like, some of the workers feel like it was a giant rat. <laughs> and some of you guys said that because it was her first litter, it could have been her who killed them. Aww. But she's a very sweet cat. I love her. Oh, and another thing I wanted to show you guys. Look at this new stalk from our palm tree. So big. I've been waiting for like new foliage to come in. So this tree is definitely established. Um, it's been here now for a few months and I've been waiting for it to send one of these giant big leaf stalks. Now it's a sign that this tree has set its roots down and is extracting nutrients from the soil enough to start like sending out a lot of foliage. This one is starting to as well, and so is this. Oh, I'm so happy. It's been a dream of mine to have palm trees of my own. Those ones down there are already sprouting, already established and doing really well. They're gonna be big very soon. Melody's liking the lounge chair. You like it? <laughs> she walks around like she owns the place. And in fact, she's been living here longer than we have. Back when we didn't even have windows or doors, she was already living in the house. So guys, I'm just swimming here in the pool and I particularly love this. Let me show you. I love the colors of this arrangement of plants in particular. See the bromeliads to the left with the boulders and then these like beautiful like colored plants and flowers that border the parking lot. It's such a cool combo. See those leaves that are like white and pink? I find it to be so pretty. It's all growing in so nicely, all the plants on the property. Really love this. Um, you have 
Giganteum on the right, I believe. You have Schefflera plants on the bottom, as well as African bird's nest fern at the bottom and the top of the tree. Um, up there, we did not plant that. That is staghorn fern, I believe. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, all you plant enthusiasts. But we did plant this, more bird's nest fern. Plants really make a difference, guys. If you're in a place, guys, and it feels a little sterile, dull, just get some plants and there's something about it. Like their life force somehow just brings a little bit of vibrancy and like good vibes to a space. I love plants. Are any of you guys plant lovers out there? I love staring at this forest at the back. See, huge tree. That tree up there is massive. But guys, remember what this looks like now, now that it's rainy season. All the trees are lush, thick, 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 because come summertime around um, March next year, this will all like kind of die out. It'll look dry, like the trees will shed their leaves. Um, you'll see mostly wood. It's kind of like, I guess, winter time almost, because it gets too hot and too dry, not enough water for the plants to survive. So they kind of like shrivel up and self-preserve until rainy season again. Isn't that interesting, guys? Because like in North America and temperate regions, fall and winter is when trees kind of go into hibernation. But here in the tropics, the trees and plants kind of go into their hibernation, known as estivation, in the summertime, when things are not favorable for them. So it's the opposite. <sighs> Amazing, right? Guys, let's try out this new lounge. <gasps> oh. Oh, it kind of rocks. This rocks. This rocking lounge. Wee, wee. Watch me break it. <laughs> oh, this is perfect for our guests who like to tan. Most people in the Philippines, however, do not like to tan because here it's the opposite from North America. And people like to stay light skinned because, I don't know, very old ingrained beauty standards. <laughs> Um, light skin like RJ. So RJ will rarely come out here during the like hot sunny day. Also because he burns. But like most Filipinos prefer to swim really early in the morning and then evening when it's not so hot. Um, you know, my grandma always used to say, don't stay out in the sun, you'll get dark. It's ugly. I'm like, what? You know how much money Canadians have to pay to get a tan? Tanning beds are expensive booking a vacation to like the Caribbean expensive it's it's the opposite like when you're tanned abroad it's like ooh, where did you go it like suggests you have money so these lounge chairs will be good for our visitors from abroad that want to catch a tan oh my Mabuhay squad guess what just arrived we have a package ooh. um and I believe this is a package from the US now um, it was sent to us from our good friends, Birdtrix. You guys know Birdtrix. They are the bird YouTube influencers to follow on the platform. They're everything birds. If you have pet birds, even if you don't have pet birds, their channel is just so informative on like, you know, pet bird nutrition and training and just everything. I have all their nutrition and cookbooks. Um, and if you guys recall last year, we actually met them uh, Dave and Jamie and their daughter in Orlando at Animal Con. Oh my gosh, awesome folks. They really know their birds. They've got a ton of parrots at home. And oh, thank you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you so much for helping us save parrots one person at a time, bird tricks. Isn't that sweet? Now that's their motto, saving parrots one person at a time because it's always the person's fault. <laughs> It's not the, not the parrot's fault. In case the birds do things that are unfavorable to humans, I really love their, um, their outlook and philosophy on keeping pet birds. So you guys must check out their YouTube channel. And guys, look. Oh, I love it. Love it so much. They're so generous. Jamie and Dave, thank you. <gasps> ah! Oh my gosh, guys, look. 
It's a bunch of bird toys. Oh, natural bird toys, guys. Oh, my birds are gonna love these. Let's see. Oh my, look at this, guys. Good quality. And see, look. They've got, oh, it's like soft. So the birds are gonna love to munch on this. Cardboard, actual wood. Oh, natural bird toys. Love it. Guys, if um, you ever need anything parrots, go check out their website. Uh, it's birdtricks.com. Um, they have everything, literature, they've got bird food, and they've got toys like this. Oh, my birds are gonna love these. Oh, there's so much. Oh, here, here are the rings in case I need to attach it to cages and stuff. Oh my, my birds are gonna have a field day. Look, see, they're gonna love to pull out those little things in there. See, with birds, because they're so smart, as you guys have seen in the aviary, and you'll probably see when we go into the aviary in a bit, to put these in there, um, birds need to be constantly stimulated. In nature, they're out there, they're wearing down their beaks, which grow constantly, and they're trimming them down by biting and chewing up things. Um, and so they need to do it. Otherwise, they get stressed. Oh, look at this. Oh, my birds will love this. <gasps> and I like that it's all natural colors. Like, see, this will, this will blend so well in our aviary. Oh, this is awesome. Look, see, corn, and my conures love these like dried corn cobs. Oh, amazing. <gasps> Look, it just never ends, guys. There's so much. Bamboo, and I love these really soft bits. See, like, my birds will get kind of too bored if the wood is all the same texture and like softness, but because it's so like varied, oh, my birds are gonna love destroying this. Look at this! Oh my gosh, the Conyers will love this! Bird tricks, you sent so much. Wow, these are good quality toys, guys. I am so shocked. Um, there's a lot here. See, they've got this. Oh, I love this. See, this you can turn into a foraging toy. So, oh, it's attached to here. In these little cups, you can hide treats, like little nuts and seeds, and the birds can have a feast and a blast. Trying to get in there. Holy, they are so... Oh, I like this one. See, I would jam a nut in there and make the birds go crazy trying to destroy this. Wow. I'm amazed. Look at all of these toys. They're just amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Jamie and Dave from Bird Tricks. My birds are going to love these. Now, I don't want to put them all in at once. Just, I think, gradually... Oh my gosh, so much to choose from. Okay, which do I choose first? Okay, I'm gonna choose one of the big ones. Now, some of these, I believe, will be able to brave the rain. Some have paper in it, so if they get soaked, I think, like this, I would have to put in a more shaded part of the aviary, because it's like cardboard. Oh my, okay, so I'm gonna try. Ooh, this is like, I don't know if it's more fun for the birds or for me. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try one large toy. So I'll try this corn on the cob, and then I'm gonna try a small toy. Okay, so choosing this, this is a big toy. This is a little toy, this one. Um, and then this like blockish one, and I'm gonna put some cashews in here. I in fact have some out right now. And it's so perfect timing because as you see, as you will see in the aviary when we go in there. They've destroyed a lot of the plants, and so we're not gonna give them any more trees to destroy because we're building an outdoor aviary for them. There, I'm just sticking that cashew in there, and then I'm gonna stick another cashew right here. Jam it in there. They're gonna love to get at that. Oh, oh, see, there. Oh my gosh. Thank you again, Bertrix. Let's go put it in the aviary. Oh, birdies. The birds are up there. Hi guys, I got a gift. They're already coming down to check things out. Okay, where do I put this? I'll put this one right here. Hook it on right there. This is the one with the cashew. Uh, there. Isn't that cool? It's a new toy, yes. See, no tree. They destroyed that tree. No tree, they destroyed this tree. 
This bamboo was kind of growing back, it still is, but they've destroyed the like second like batch of growth. Oh my gosh, I turn around and in one second, birds are down here, okay. Wow, they're even allowed to eat this leather piece? Oh, they're gonna love this. Yes, okay, small piece up here. Oh, they're so intrigued, guys. Okay, and then the big toy, like see that toy, they'll play with that every now and then. And this toy they've completely destroyed, they'll play with that too. R I rarely do I see them playing with this. Um, they really just prefer plants, but look, maybe if we add more interesting toys like this, cause it is wood. So, you know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll give this a shot. Here, I'll put this here. I gotta hook it past that notch there. Okay, let's see. All right guys, three new toys for you to play with. One, two, and three. I'm gonna step back. They're gonna inspect it first. Look, they're looking at it. They're so interested. We can see in the reflection that the conures right now are waiting for sunset. They're way up there. But the blue napes are considering playing. Now birds are not the most trusting creatures <laughs> because in nature, everything is out to eat them. Um, so it takes them a while to warm up to new things. Um, but I have no doubt in my mind, they'll be playing with these toys soon. Look, they're just so intrigued by it. Go on guys. I know you want to chew them. They're checking it out. I think they're gonna be playing with this toy first. This one right here, with the cashews. There we go. Ah, awesome. Of course, Gabriella is the bravest and the first to inspect. Go ahead, Gabs. It's safe. Yes. Ah, oh, so satisfying, right? No, Marcelo, don't destroy that part. It'll fall. <laughs> if they destroy that string part, that is what the metal things are for. The metal rings that came with the package. I'll be attaching them with the metal. <laughs> they really like the label so far. Oh, now they're gonna fight over the toy. One of the conures is down to inspect. She's gonna scope out the toy. There we go. Awesome. Yay. They're checking out the back toy now, the corn. Yay, now they're actually checking out this other toy, the small toy. Clara is eating this. I knew they would love the leather part, the leather tag. Yay, they love it. They're fighting over it. Awesome. Guys, listen to them cackling as they play with the toy. I love the sounds. Okay, no need to quarrel over it. Guys, I feel like this one needs to be in a more opportune spot where they can like reach it from another branch. So I'm gonna put it way up there so that they can reach it from this branch here. Sorry guys, just moving this up here. There, now you guys can get at it, see? Don't you want to play with the toys? <laughs> Guys, success. <laughs> Love it. Yay. Guys, can I just say how good it is to see the blue napes up here, all the way to the top? It took them a ye almost a year. <laughs> I'm gonna go up there and say hi to them. I cannot wait to blow their minds right now by saying hi to them up there. I've been trying to call them up to the third floor for ages. Hi guys. Oh, okay. Hi, here are the conures. And I think the, <laughs> the blue napes are tripping out that I'm up here too. I've been trying to call you guys here forever. 
Okay guys, honestly, I'm here to say hi to the blue napes for the first time up here. Hello. Hi. Who are you? Are you Gabriella? I think you're Gabriella. Yeah. Hi Gabs. It's nice up here, right? Okay, okay. Hi. Ooh, yes. We're making you guys a new aviary where it's all this material. You'll have wind blowing on your feathers soon enough. It's nice up here, right? Great view, huh? Man, the first time must have been amazing. I don't know when the first time the blue napes came up here, but pretty sure it was sometime last week. Pretty cool, right? You guys can watch the sunset and screech. Hmm? I bet you're also here in the mornings, screeching your heads off at sunrise, just like the Conyers. Am I right? <laughs> they really do have an awesome view up here. See, they can watch birds fly by. It's really, really great. They've got awesome sun up here. Oh, Gabriella flew here now, all the way from down there. You're such a good flyer. Yes, such a good flyer. Let's see if she'll follow me here. Come on, come on. Come on. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Wait, I want to see the, the blue napes. Here she comes. Awesome! Love it! You're so good. And see, they just follow me all around. I tell you guys, that aviary is such a dream come true. It really is. Oh, wow, guys. That toy's completely destroyed. Oh, man. You see? You see how destructive my birds are? <laughs> wow. Okay. But look, look at that eye pinning. You see how the pupils dilate? They become big, then small. That's how you know a bird loves what it's doing. And see this? This is how you know a parrot toy is working. <laughs> you liked it, huh? Cool, right? Here come the Conyers. Go, 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 there's more. Right here. You guys don't want to destroy this one yet? Guys, it hasn't even been an hour. And look at the destruction. The ball removed from this and the cashew. Little bit of cashew still in there. They've already removed like, I guess a ball from here and chewed up some of this part. And they will just work on this all day. I think that's either Marcelo or Gabriella. Almost finished that toy. And I'm glad I have so many of them because I don't think these will last long. But this is how you engage birds kept in captivity, guys. If you can't give them actual trees and wood, then you're, the only option is like bird toys that you buy. Who is this? Who are you? I can't tell them apart anymore, guys. Oh, little, are you grooming me? Are you grooming me? That's how they show affection, guys. I cannot wait to work on your new aviary, you. And finally get more conures. I wanna get sun conures and like green cheeks. So I came back to check on the progress of the toys and they've already started to work on the corn and the small toy demolished. This toy, I was like, okay, they demolished it, but then I looked for the remains and there's a few remains here, but then I noticed it was here <laughs> in the bamboo. One of the birds must have like brought it here and dropped it. Oh, there is still a lot more left here, guys. Let's not waste this. All right, Marcelo, let me replace this up here so that you can work on it. And there he goes. Or somebody can work on this because this definitely still has life to it. Oh, it must be so satisfying to be able to crunch through this. Like it's not solid hard, like most of the branches that they're used to chewing here in the aviary. It's like semi-soft. So it must be really satisfying to destroy. Who are you this time? Go play with your toy, go. <laughs> and she's back. <laughs> my guess is you are Ruby. So with my birds, like once it's casted off to the floor, they don't go and retrieve it. It's just gone from their lives, away from their universe. So if it's ever on the floor, I have to really go and rehang it. <laughs> They're so cute. I'm just happy to see my birds so engaged. But a lot of parrot and bird owners just keep their birds in cages and 
with no stimulation. And it's a little treacherous for the bird. It's torture for the bird because destruction is what they're wired to do. Their beaks constantly grow, so, you know, they need to keep wearing them down. But these birds, man, they have tons of plants and trees and branches and now toys um, to keep them busy all day long. And that just, that makes me happy. As you can see, my dogs also love bird watching. They watch the birds all day long. Good morning. Guys, the birds are up all over the aviary. Um, and look, it looks like they're back at destroying the remaining toy. Um, they're still working on that corn one, which is good. Uh, they're also having breakfast. Gosh, it is awesome. I love seeing the birds so active. A couple of the conures are here to destroy the bamboo, but I believe they actually eat it too. So like all these plants, they're parrot safe and the birds like consume the foliage and botanicals and all of that, like all of that good stuff in the plant. See, look at them. But my, I knew it. I knew the birds would love that square cubing, cubic one. All right. That is one happy and engaged parrot. I could just sit here and watch them all day. They are so entertaining. Oops. So yeah, guys, if you haven't seen yesterday's vlog, um, these birds are going to be moving to an outdoor aviary, which we still have to build. So it might be a month from now. It might be two months from now. Who knows? But our side lot, which is our farming side, um, has a lot of space, so we will probably build one or two aviaries um, and our plan is to separate the conures from the blue napes and Just keep them in separate cages because guys I want our flock to grow um, So I'm planning on putting like medium-sized birds on one aviary, aviary and then like these smaller conure species and I want to get more conures um, in the other aviary. That is the plan currently. And the reason why these birds need to move out is because, um, well, one, the plants. Having to always cycle plants or buy new plants is expensive. Before, it took the birds a while to destroy the plants, but now they are so good at destroying trees and plants that we put in there. As soon as we move it in, guys, like the trees and plants are destroyed in one or two days. Like they go in, they make it their personal business to destroy the plants. Um, and as you can imagine, it's not the most cost effective thing to do. And our options are we don't put plants in here and it's just like sticks and stuff, or we build them an outdoor aviary. Um, and then we fill this again with plants and trees and flowers and we have only songbirds in here. Songbirds are different birds than parrots because they don't have to keep wearing down their beak and chew things, so they don't destroy plants like parrots do. Yes, it might be sad, but we will still see them every day. Um, and there are actually benefits to an outdoor aviary as opposed to one that's surrounded by glass and bricks. One being ventilation and wind, the birds will have that. They'll also have much more sunlight out there but yeah, this is just the decision RJ and I came to after having this aviary for about a year. Like, cost-wise, it's not the smartest thing. This aviary was greatly experimental, and we've learned a lot, guys, over the year that we've had this aviary. Um, and so, yeah, this is its just part of the learning curve. I feel like these parrots will be much better in an outdoor aviary um, on our side lot. Hi, guys. <laughs> How you doing? Hmm? These conures prefer to land on people's heads and shoulders. Never on, like, my hands. <laughs> but for these birds, they are so tame. I've spent so much time with them and socializing them at a young age. Didn't hand feed them, because um, that's the ultimate way to tame a bird, but you can also tame them just by spending time with them. It's really one of those things. You gotta put in the hours. Um, and then they eventually learn to trust you 
and then they learn to trust anyone you bring into the aviary. Not sure if that'll be the case for songbirds. You're tickling me. Ooh. But I'll try to spend time with the songbirds and also try to socialize them and tame them. It would be great if the songbirds trust humans as well, enough to at least land on them and accept food and treats and stuff. Ah, okay. You're like tickling me. Gosh, look at how messy they are. Loving the breakfast. In case you guys are new to parrots, they need like fresh, vet, like chop. Um, I put vegetables in there, um, various flowers, like dr dried flowers. Um, what else is in there? Sometimes we add fruit, a bunch of like random stuff. It's all fresh, like veggie and healthy stuff. It's important to give them this in the morning when they're the hungriest because then they eat all the healthy stuff. Because if you feed them their seeds right away, they will just always eat the seeds, but they need this stuff too, see? And then in the afternoons, that's when they get their dry mix. So that's seeds, nuts, um, yes. Um, and all that good stuff. It's like a, it's basically a quality bird seed mix. Proper nutrition for birds is, it's really hard to do. <laughs> you could just give them like a parrot mix, um, which already comes with like the necessary pellets and stuff, but there's a lot of debate as to whether that's sufficient enough for a bird. They really need like fresh raw, raw foods to be truly healthy. And look, like you could see it in the feathers of the bird and the beaks. My birds are very healthy, right? See, Clara, fully feathered now. Before she didn't have like wing feathers and tail feathers, it was really bad. But after a year of eating properly, they grew back. It was awesome. And you're a flyer now. You're a good flyer now, Clara. I'm so happy about this. This here is probably Ruby, the tamest of my conures. There's RJ. Good morning, RJ. <laughs> she just, she's content hanging out, nibbling on my ear. But when she nibbles a little hard, I just kind of like move her away. You have to let them know how gentle they're allowed to preen you. Okay, I don't like when she gets near here, she likes to pick at like my moles and stuff. But preening is their way to show affection. Now there's two, this is probably Scarlet. You have a dirty beak, ow! Okay, see, that, that was not loving. It was a little hard. Okay, you, you're a little hard, this one. Okay guys, be nice. I don't like when they bite hard. <laughs> okay, that was a nice kiss. I'm scared to like let them near my lips. Okay. Okay, that was a hard bite. Out. <laughs> and they've left some decor on my shirt. <laughs> oh, gotta love life with birds. And they're eating together now as a flock. We have several feeding stations. This is Rojo. It just allows the birds to get a chance to eat in case they get like territorial. They don't fight over food bowls. Yes, guys, sun is shining. Love that. And what's actually cool is, uh, we didn't plan for this, but because the aviary has windows on all four sides on both first and second floor, it's kind of like having a skylight. So the light, as you can see here, it's morning. So it starts here, right when we come out of our bedroom. So beautiful sunlight streaming in. And then as the sun moves from there to around there, the light kind of moves to here and then to the other side. It's really great. It's like having a giant skylight. And I just love the aviary. It, it just, it's a dream having this, guys. The dogs again here watching the birds. And watch, the birds come and greet me every morning. Like I come out of the bedroom and they're usually lined up here to say hi. Hi. There's one, hi, you gonna come here? Now, one thing I noticed was that during rainy season, this gets green, you see it? It's kind of gross looking. Um, I believe that's either algae or moss, but during uh, summer, when it doesn't rain as much, this goes back to gray. 
It's just something we've accepted. Um, I'm thinking once this becomes a songbird aviary, I'm gonna start planting a lot of more plant, hanging plants along these rings, and maybe even climbing plants that will just climb. Uh, but I'll have to make sure the climbing plants don't make it all the way to the top and, may, and block all that valuable sunlight coming in. We just have to be diligent at maintaining. Yay, they're playing with the corn toy now. <laughs> Gosh, look at that. Yum. They really love the leather tags. And the other two are <laughs> competing over this square one. I mean the cuboid one. See? So guys, here in the yard, see, I'll probably hop in the pool later. Um, but I am thinking that a good place to possibly put our aviary is here, right here. Um, that's just one of the places we're considering. Please excuse the scaffolding there. Um, because at least we could, our guests could come here and appreciate the birds um, without having to go to the side lot uh, to appreciate the birds. Um, so I'm thinking the aviary would go way down there. See, and all the way here. We still have to design it, um, but I think that would be great. Be and then the birds can also come up here. They get some great sunlight. Um, and they can even, we're within eye shot when we're in the pool. See, or down here. What do you guys think? Only thing is, if we do build an aviary there, it might break up the scenic view from the infinity area. So like, let's say we're swimming and we, we stand here, the, there might be a like a big visible cage there that breaks up that, like this scenery. But a part of me says, no, I think it'll, it'll look nice in my opinion. What do you guys say? Just lying down here on the couch right now. Hey Sahara, you gonna join me? You coming? Yep, she wants to snuggle. Come. <laughs> I try my best to enjoy the couch. <laughs> I say try my best because there are just so many places in the home where it's like a nice energy to lounge and relax. Um, but it's not often that I come here. RJ often uses this couch, um, but I do like it here. It's a nice energy, especially in the mornings. The dogs also like to lounge here. There's Cypher, just hanging out. Oh, he heard his name. You wanna come here too? What, come? Nope, he's just gonna lie down right there on the nice cold tile floor. Guys, you know what I realized? We don't really open these curtains so much. Let's do that now. I wonder what it looks like. I'm sure it's really pretty. Oh, oh, it looks really good. Oh, that's so, oh, that looks good. It like really opens up a space, opens up the space, I mean. Oh, cool. What do you guys think? Shall we try opening this? Let's see. Yes. <laughs> Cypher's confused. He's like, I don't usually hear sounds coming from this side. What's going on? Oh. Oh, that's a different look. It's so open. I guess if we want the more airy, kind of open and exposed look here in the living room, then having it open is a different, it's a different look. Um, but it's not as homey, I guess. This now feels more like a lounging area at a hotel. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, just really open and airy and just kind of like the place where you wait while waiting for, you know, front desk to get your key card <laughs> for your room. That's what it feels like with the curtains open and like exposing the whole living room area like this. Yeah, I think I prefer the living room curtains drawn. All right, drawing the curtains back, turning it back into the living room that we're used to. That's cool. What do you guys say, with curtains or without? It's just a different energy, I guess. Ah, back to homey feels. 
Yes, guys, it is midday and I want to get some swimming in. Yay. I like to be in the sun. It's really good for mood, one thing. It ha It's good for circadian cycle, uh, you know, so that you get sleepy at the right time. Um, of course, good for vitamin D3, uh, for your bones. So many benefits to being in the sun. Let's open up this. Oh, yes. Gorgeous day to swim. Oh, the water is warm, my boy squad. It's warm. Oh, so good. Guys, did I mention how much I love Philippine weather? <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna dump. I'm gonna dunk. Yes. Oh, the water, guys, is perfect. Perfecto. Yay. See, see, I just love bamboo, guys. It's so Asian. <laughs> like, we don't have bamboo growing in the wild in Canada, so whenever I see bamboo, I'm just reminded of Asia. It looks like Asia, and I love it. And it's so flexible, it really just bends with the wind, and I just love watching it wave. Thank you, Light. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord, for this weather and this pool. Um, I'm gonna try to do a few laps um, and do cardio and then later go to the gym. That's the plan today. Um, did some work for Ants Canada last night. Gonna try to do some Ants Canada work today and just vlog, vlog with you guys all day. You guys are my best friends. You guys get to hang with me. So all you Americans, how was your um, Independence Day? Was it fun? Happy Independ Independence Day to all you Americanos. Again, happy belated um, Canada Day to you Canadians. Hope you guys had a safe holidays. Guys, there is beer in the fridge. Now I'm looking at it, but I, I can see how much I've progressed in maturity <laughs> because if this were 10 years ago, I would so be getting drunk right now. I have free time. We have beautiful weather. There's a pool, music at our disposal. If my 32 year old self would have been wasted right now. But guys, I've decreased so much in my alcohol drinking. Now here's the thing. Uh, the last time I got drunk, was, well, Saba, uh, so not too long ago. But I now kind of like drink very, like just occasionally. Whenever we're in a situation where I have the opportunity to make lifelong memories and when like a bunch of us friends are drinking and it's a meaningful social gathering, then I will drink, uh, you know, to, uh, to make memories with everybody and kind of be on the same level, I guess. But I've been thinking of quitting, <laughs> strangely. I'm not gonna say I'm going to quit alcohol because growing up in Canada with the friends I grew up with, social drinking just became part of having fun. And I love drinking, but <clears throat> the reason I say I've been thinking of quitting is, well, one, it's not healthy. One glass of wine, sure, okay but like drinking to get drunk, it's not healthy. And I find I'm in my best fitness shape. Like see, I'm right now I'm at about 13% body fat and making gains at the gym. I'm really happy with my fitness right now, but I cannot achieve this if I'm drinking three nights a week or even once a week, even that, I, I can already see and feel the difference. I cannot achieve my fitness goals drinking often. Um, but more than that, sometimes alcohol, strangely, has this depressing sort of effect on me personally. I find the two or three days after drinking, not only low energy, but I sometimes feel not myself. Like, usually my default, guys, is I wake up, I'm excited about life, I'm happy, ready to start my day, I notice all the beautiful things in life, but 
the one or two or sometimes three days after drinking, I don't know if it's because I'm crashing from a serotonin crash or I've killed a lot of my microbiome in my gut, but I'm not as happy. And in fact, a lot of negative thoughts come into my mind, like sad thoughts, like weird stuff that isn't me. And I'm 42 years old now, so I've lived with myself long enough to know that the one or two days after drinking, I'm very sad and low energy. And I'm not going to say depressed because manic depression is a totally different thing. Um, but I do have to coach myself saying, okay, this is the one or two days after drinking, Mikey, stop thinking negative thoughts. Let's get back on track and be positive and happy. So yeah, like, and the older I get, guys, the more I notice this. Like in my 20s, I could drink and the next day I'm fine. But in my 30s, I started to notice, like, it was affecting my, my mood levels the day or two after drinking. Um, does that happen to you guys? Let me know. The last time we drank in Saba, the next two or three days afterward, it was, you know, it was just like, oh, here we go again. I'm feeling sort of like low serotonin. I'm not feeling like myself. I don't feel like vlogging. I don't feel like working. I just feel like being in bed all day and like doing nothing, aim motivated. So yeah, I've been thinking like, should I quit alcohol? But if I do, I don't want to officially announce it because let's say I'm in Canada and I'm with my cousins and we're out on a fun night of drinking. Yeah, I could go the whole night not drinking, just drinking soda. But I also want to be social with everybody. Anyway, guys, perhaps I'm rambling on now, but um, yeah, I'm going to, I think, greatly decrease my drinking even more uh, I'm gonna try to anyway cuz guys like as much as I love a night out of drinking with friends and being wasted <laughs> I've had great memories of those nights um, I also love being fit I love being healthy not only like just for like photos on Instagram but it feels good being healthy I feel good having 13% body fat. Like, I feel like I'm back in my 20-something-year-old body. In fact, even in my 20s, I wasn't this fit. So, um, yeah, and I don't know if that's worth getting sloshed a few nights a week, you know? I don't know if it's worth it. I'll take health and fitness over, you know, the feeling of getting drunk. Anyway, guys, sorry for that, like, rant on alcohol. Uh, <laughs> I was just looking at those Sapporos in there going, mmm. There are benefits though to having one beer or a wine, you know, every now and then. Some cultures like Japan, they drink a beer a day with every meal. And Japanese people are some of the longest lived people. There's a lot of like nutrients also in beer and wine. I guess guys, moderation is the key. Okay, fine. That will be, that will be the lesson for today. I'm not gonna say I'm quitting alcohol, but I'll do my best to like reduce it even more than I already am taking it. In the water I go. All right guys, half an hour in the pool. That's good enough for me. Oh, talk about refreshing. Love that. So one of our secrets to keep our plants alive, because normally in some of the spots where the plants are situated, um, they don't get enough light. So what we do now is we play, like this one has survived about a year, but look, it's lost a lot of its leaves because it's normally there and it depends on the morning sun that comes in here, which isn't enough over time. So now we put our plants right next to the aviary so they get direct sunlight and they feel better. This one too, see it's doing a lot better now that we've put it next to the aviary as well as our fiddly fig. Beautiful fiddly fig, wow. All right, so the birds are receiving their afternoon seed mix now. <laughs> There's at the LC. And the birds are excited, look at them flying around. Go on. <laughs> All right guys, so it's been quite the adventure. Thank you so much once again for watching today's vlog and thank you as well Bertrix uh, for sending all of those awesome toys. My birds are totally loving the destruction. And once again, all of you bird owners out there, be sure to check out Bertrix.com. They offer a variety of products 
literature and also consultation um, sessions in case you have any questions or problems with your pet bird. Mm -hmm. Go check them out. And if you made it to the end of this vlog, congratulations. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end. Um, really means a lot to us that you guys are part of this entire home building journey with us. Um, the love has never been greater than it is now. Yuma Buhai Squad, thank you so much. So, if you enjoyed this vlog, be sure to hit the like button as it really helps us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. I know you guys have been doing that, so thank you so much. And if you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhai Squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Love you guys so much. See you in the next vlog. Bye. Mm -hmm.